Hello, welcome back. So, today we shall start lecture 12 and continue on the discussion on impact diodes, microwave impact, impact diodes that we talked about or we started to talk about in lecture 11, the previous lecture. You had a feel for uh, the two terminal microwave devices and certain things associated with for instance the negative AC resistance uh, and how people use that to the advantage to generate an RF signal. But today we will continue on the discussion on impact diode and we will try to wrap up the impact so that in the next lecture we can start about gun diodes. And please remember these diodes are primarily useful for generating RF signal of reasonable powers okay? and so they are widely used even today. Okay, over to the whiteboard. Of course, so in the last lecture we talked about uh, the fact that uh, you know you have a terminal AC voltage and then you have a 90 degree phase shifted uh, impulse that is coming up and then another 90 degree phase shifted injection current that is coming up. So maybe I can continue from that you know again, but in all this discussion it is good to have that uh, the diagram of the initial uh, schematic of the this is your N plus, this is your P plus. This is your P which is your avalanche multiplication, this is your undop region and then if you remember the field you know the field is only in the high in the P region and it is not high in the I region, it is it's, it's high, it is not as high as in the P region. So your band diagram uh, if you, this is your Fermi level, your uh, band diagram looks something like, like that, get that slow field, I mean not low field constant field sorry, okay. my diagram is not very good here. Okay. And so this is your drift region, this is your L, this is your drift region, correct? This is your avalanche region, sorry, <coughs> this is your avalanche region. So what I said is that at this P and N plus region junction, you start the avalanche. Okay. But now the carriers, the pulse is generated as I told you and as soon as and holes, here it is all holes as soon as the holes, I will give holes as circles, as, as soon as the holes enter the drift region, they will sail across the drift region with a constant velocity of V set. You want the field to be such that you have velocity saturation, you do not want it to be in a mobility limited regime, so, because you can get maximum speed at V set. So you, you will sail it at the V set across this region, correct? and that constitutes your injection current IET, that is your injection current. The injection current you know that pulse package has entered the drift region and it is sailing through the drift region at a constant velocity of V set, the injection current. There is a pulse that comes up I naught T which is very narrow pulse and it is only transitorily when the avalanche in the positive half cycle you had this avalanche right. At that point it was coming up in the negative half cycle the avalanche is gone because this voltage, this DC voltage is almost at the brink of the device breaking down. So anything in the half this cycle the device will break down but it will not break down, it, I mean the device will start avalanche, it will not break down, it will start avalanche and then again it will come down to a lower field so that avalanche is stopped. Okay? So please remember that these holes that are entering the drift region, they will sail through the entire long I region with a drift velocity of V set. So these holes travel through this I region okay? and so this induced current that is happening is actually the total charge of the hole divided by the time they take to transit across the drift region which is the I region and I know that the transit time is given by the total length L by V set. So this is basically V set by L into Q the charge of the hole. This is your uh, L correct this is your L okay, and it is travelling through V set that is the time the time takes to travel to V set. Okay. So when a pulse of hole current I naught T is generated suddenly or abruptly because of the, the avalanche process that is starting at the N plus P junction. I told you right at the edge at the at the junction of N plus P region you have the highest field, recall the highest field you know the field goes like that and it stays constant remember this is the field correct. So this is your I region, this is your P region, this is your N plus region. So the, the peak electric field is at the N plus P junction. So when a pulse of whole current is generated there, an external constant current will flow in the circuit for a duration of tau. Okay, in which the holes are moving across this drift region, also we call a space charge region. So this I of t because of the moving holes is delayed by tau by 2 or 90 degree with respect to I naught t. So I naught t is after I naught t happens, there is a delay of pi by 2 before this start, this is going okay. and I naught t itself is delayed by 90 degree with respect to the avalanche or with respect to the 
AC voltage that is at the terminal correct. Now, now, now the microwave cavity where you have placed this avalanche diode the microwave cavity should be tuned again the RC or LC tuning will come into picture. It should give it tuned to give you a resonant frequency of uh, basically omega which is your 2 pi f correct. It should be equal to pi by tau tau is the phase delay I mean sorry the transit time delay sorry and pi is the phase delay that is happening between the AC signal and the injected current. So, your cavity tuning should be such that your frequency of operation or the cavity frequency resonant frequency is such that omega tau is equal to pi, pi is the phase difference between the AC signal the voltage AC and the injected current which is basically the current that is flowing out in the circuit is this. So, there is a phase difference of 180 degree that is what it means that is precisely what it means. And so, your, your resonant frequency is basically uh, it can come out to be as uh, you know if you do the math here it will come out to be pi by uh, 2 pi into tau, tau is nothing but your uh, L by V set. So, this is basically V set by 2 times of L. So, if you know L the distance say 10 micron you know V set say 2 into 10 to the power 7 per centimeter per second so then you know frequency the resonant frequency of the cavity should be that such that you have have this 180 degree phase difference such that you have this negative resistance the so called negative resistance ok. So, AC voltage and AC signal or RF signal RF voltage and RF current are essentially out of phase 180 degree. So, you can say it is a negative conductance or a negative resistance and that is useful for microwave oscillation ok that is precisely what it means ok. Now, in this oscillating uh, you know the, the impact diode which is basically creating this you know this oscillations or you are generating the RF signal what is the maximum power you can get and at what frequency that is a very important question because it is it is really uh, relevant to the practical applications how much power you are going to get correct. But till now I hope it is clear that you actually have a DC signal but the initial noise or initial ramp up voltage can create this oscillation which will be sustained and you have a resonant cavity or you have a cavity resonator ok that will be tuned to a certain frequency because based on this the dimension of the device L and the velocity saturation which is a material property by the way. So, you have the resonant frequency and the oscillations will now be sustained at the resonant frequency because you will maintain the 180 degree phase difference I hope that is clear till now ok. So, the maximum the power output will uh, depends uh, will depend of course, on the material property because the material property uh, material property will you know because the critical electric field for instance at what voltage can you bias that is depend on a material property higher band gap material will have a higher critical electric field. It also will depend on the impedance levels Z levels you know what kind of impedance matching you are giving what kind of you know output impedance for instance all those things also will differ. But in theoretically theoretically speaking the maximum power is nothing but the maximum voltage that you can get into maximum current you can get not that practically you can be at this level, but theoretically let us assume that you have the maximum voltage and you have the maximum current here we are talking about the maximum magnitude ok maximum magnitude the voltage is basically given by the maximum field that you will have into the, the drift region where the L is the drift region where essentially you have your carriers drifting ok. And of course, the maximum current will basically be your uh, the current maximum current density into area of course, right a current density into area and current density is given by your conductivity into electric field electric field of course, the maximum electric field into area ok conductivity into maximum electric field. And conductivity sigma in, in this case we can write it as epsilon naught epsilon s by tau this is the conductivity if you remember the dielectric relaxation time uh, there is a concept in that, but here essentially you have the dielectric constant divided by the transit time it is your conductivity and then you have your maximum electric field and then you have A ok. However, I can write tau as basically V set by L I can write tau oh sorry tau I can write as L by V set sorry tau as L by V set. So, I can write this as epsilon naught epsilon s divided by L into V set into E max into A ok. And so, what will happen now is that I can write this power output I can write this power output as uh, E max times L 
into i max which is your uh, epsilon naught epsilon s by l into v set into e max into a I have taken this correct. So, l l will go what I get is I have e max the maximum electric field that I can have epsilon naught epsilon s into v set correct uh, into a a is the area of the diode of course that is for me to design epsilon is a material property v set is also material property some materials have very high velocity saturation some materials do not have high velocity saturation. So, the maximum output power this is a maximum output power okay, will depend on the critical electric field this e max is actually critical electric field how much critical electric field you can sustain. And so, a wider band gap material will be able to give you higher critical field and it goes as square of the critical field. So, the output power that you can get from an impact diode of a wider band gap material will be square times higher than a, that of another material and then of course, the velocity saturation matters, but this is one expression, but we will try to get, go into a more detailed expression there. Now, recall that in the space charge region or space charge region you can also call it as the, the drift region, the drift region. Okay, the space charge region or the drift region, you have a capacitance which is basically your A area times epsilon naught epsilon s by L. This is the basic definition of a parallel plate capacitor across the drift region. You know, you have this uh, band diagram, right, like that. Sorry. So this is your L. I told you, know, and so this is your the drift region capacitance is A epsilon by L essentially. Okay. Now you know that uh, reactance. X c which is the imaginary part of the impedance is basically 1 by j omega c correct that is from your high school physics of course. So, if you take the magnitude of x of c the react the, the, the reactance part it basically comes out to be 1 by omega c okay, 1 by omega c. So, what is um, uh, c capacitance is basically a epsilon naught epsilon s by l. So, I can put the l above. Okay. Let me come to the, I am trying to get a better expression for basically the maximum power that I am going to have. Okay. So, essentially the reactance is basically your uh, I told you 1 by j omega c or omega c. So, it is L by uh, it is L by omega epsilon naught epsilon s by a. Okay. L is the other space there. Now, remember and this is not tuned at resonant this is not necessarily tuned at resonant frequency. So, if you if you consider a generic transit time effect then of course, your omega is equal to 1 by tau. The transit time is inverse of the frequency very simple. Okay. So, if that so happens if omega is equal to 1 by tau then uh, what I can do here is that I can actually uh, remove the omega and I can make it uh, 1 by tau which means the tau will come here. The tau is the transit time. Okay. I can make the tau here. So, uh, I can also say that now, I will have to consider that x c is equal to L tau by epsilon naught epsilon s by a. Okay. What am I going to do? What am I why am I doing all this? I want to find out the maximum power because the maximum power is something that I told you, you know, it is the critical electric field square epsilon naught epsilon s into velocity of saturation into a, correct? It is velocity of saturation into a. Now, what am I going to do here? I am going to replace this value in there. So, I can actually put uh, epsilon naught epsilon s a which is this correct. This is the quantity. I can put that quantity as uh, L tau by x c. Can I not put that? I can put that. So, I will have E max square into V set into L tau by x c okay? l tau by x c, but I also know that uh, in this case uh, I can actually bring in the relation between uh, tau and, uh, and v set. Remember tau equal to l by uh, v set remember l tau equal to l by v set. So, I am going to use that here and I am going to do some math you know juggle around essentially okay, once I get that uh, and then what I am going to get eventually is that I am going to get an expression here p f x okay, is equal to E max square into V set by 2 pi f into x c into V set 
pi 2 pi f this is basically omega this is basically omega okay this comes from the fact that omega into tau equal to 1 so I can put tau as actually 1 by omega I can put tau equal to 1 by omega right and I can uh, also replace L with another fact which is that your uh, tau is equal to L by V set so which means your uh, L equal to tau by V set I can do that right so if I do that then essentially I am going to get this quantity L tau is equal to tau square into V set but I can put tau as 1 by omega so uh, it will become V set by omega square that is what precisely I have done and rest everything is same xc is same e max square is same so I get this quantity right. So I get this quantity so I can simplify it basically by saying again that uh, one sec the maximum power output that I am going to get into the frequency f square you know if you look at the previous expression there is an f square in the denominator it is basically your maximum electric field that you can get into the maximum velocity saturation you can get divided by 4 pi square into xc x is the reactive component or the uh, the inductance okay oh, sorry the, the the 1 by omega c the cap capacitance okay so this is a material property this is also material property both are material properties you can have a wider band gap material and you can get very high breakdown field you can also have a material with higher saturation velocity you are going to get it back so you can see that this quantity is constant you know in a way or it's you can say that the product of power and the frequency squared is basically uh, the, 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 the figure of merit that you are looking at okay the figure of merit that you are looking at so essentially what people do is that people plot the hour, uh, output in watt okay so it could go from say maybe uh, 0.1 watt 1 watt 10 watt 100 watt 1000 watt etc and at the frequency should go fall off and this is frequency of frequency maybe few gigahertz 10 gigahertz 100 gigahertz 500 gigahertz etc etc it has to fall something like uh, very steep one by this is pf square okay so it's a pf remember it's a product of the square of the frequency and power so it falls off something like this this is a 1 by f square the power is falling as a function of 1 by f square okay the power is falling as a function of f square however what is happening here is that with of course with lower powers uh, you know with a higher frequency you are getting the power low but here is the thing in reality um, it does you do not experimentally see it if it is a CW power what is CW? CW is continuous wave continuous wave means that there is no interruption to the RF signal the RF signal is coming completely so this is CW there is another mode which is called pulsed in pulse mode you can clip you can have say the signal coming in for a certain time then it is off then again the signal will come in again it will be off so in pulse mode if you have the this is the duty cycle right how much it is on divided by the total period if your duty cycle is low like you know 1 or 0.1 percent then you can eliminate or you can remove or you can reduce heating see when you have such a high output power generating 10 watt 100 watt you are going to have a lot of heating a lot of heating okay and if you have a pulse power then you can reduce heating okay now this plot that I have drawn here is the electronic limit it is the electronic limit of the power which goes as 1 by f square however there is also a thermal limit electronic limit is not the only uh, you know factor electronic limit is this one that we did discuss this is this is the electronic limit but there is also a thermal limit because how much heat can a piece of semiconductor uh, uh, tolerate or it can have you know that that is that is also very important so let me quickly come to that before I draw this more you know correct plot so the thermal limit is very interesting because it basically talks about how much heat you can actually manage in the system okay and heat is a major issue if you are talking about a 100 watt of power at RF frequency you are talking about a really really high heat okay really high heat in fact the heat is so high that if you have an impact diode like that you know it is a realistic diode it is this is the top of the diode this is the bottom of the diode then you actually bond people actually do you know they upside down they flip it upside down and they bond this top part to a uh, substrate of a heat sink heat sink is like say a metallic block maybe a copper molybdenum alloy kind of a metallic block 
which can take the heat away. So, the top of the device actually is uh, tried to it is it, it's bonded upside down to heat sink so that it can take the heat away because most of the heat might generate in the top near the top. So, heat sink has to be very close to the heat source where the main heat is been generated. So, if R T is the thermal resistance there is a thermal resistance and the thermal resistance arises not only from the hotspot, but also different thermal resistance boundaries you know if you have different layers it introduce thermal resistance. So, if R T is the thermal resistance and if your delta T is the temperature rise that is happening temperature rise with respect to what the temperature rise between the junction and the heat sink. The junction is where all the heat is happening. So, junction and the heat sink there is a temperature difference right. So, the temperature difference is delta T. So, essentially your power dissipated in that ok the power dissipated in the diode will actually be delta T by R T the thermal resistance ok this is the heat that you are transmitting to the heat sink. Now, you assume that the the major contribution to your thermal resistance is from your uh, the reactive component X, X C. If your X C is maintained constant and is the major contribution for your R T ok. Then what you can do is that I can uh, because it has a 1 by omega C kind of a factor correct it is it has an 1 by omega C factor. So, I can actually make this as something like uh, the P times F is equal to the thermal conductivity which is kappa S into delta T by epsilon naught epsilon s and this is constant uh, for a given delta T ok. Because this f comes from this omega assumption is that your dominant contribution to R T comes from the x C ok. In that case so essentially P f is your some constant kappa into delta T for a given delta T into epsilon naught epsilon s. So, if you plot the power the micro output power as versus frequency and in the thermal limit in the thermal limit it will have like this which is 1 by f. Now, you go back to the previous slide yes. So, the thermal limit here will come something like that this is the thermal limit the other blue one is the electronic limit. So, what happens is that at lower frequencies when I say lower it, it still could mean tens of gigahertz by the way ok. This is a corner frequency this is a corner frequency this side of the corner frequency you thermal limit is is coming like that you know it is it is it is one uh, it is one by f correct. And then uh, thermal limit is this this is the thermal which is basically limiting the performance of the diode and this is your electronic which is uh, one by f square this is electronic this is not playing a role. But as you come to beyond the frequency the corner frequency the higher frequencies your electronic limit 1 by f square the electronic limit dominates 1 by f square electronic limit dominates at higher frequencies at lower frequencies thermal limitation comes into picture ok. So, beyond this corner this corner sorry <coughs> maybe I will use a different page here just give me a second ok. So, essentially I was drawing the output power with respect to frequency. So, you know the electronics goes like that and uh, thermal goes like that. So, this is your corner frequency say F c. So, this part at lower frequency thermal limitations dominate and you get this power. At higher frequencies more than thermal electronic 1 by f square 1 by f square electronic property dominates the electronic uh, power and you get you are get limited by the electronic power. This is for CW. However, if you have pulsed if you have pulsed output you are talking about an RF signal then you clip it off again RF signal and clip it. So, then you are dissipating the heat better in that case in that case what will happen is that the heating will not be a problem the heating will not be a problem not a problem because you are pulsing. In that case you will get this 1 by f square for the entire range 1 by f square for the entire range ok the power that you get for the entire range you will get that power ok it is very important. And this corner frequency depends on many things it of course depends on material properties ok it depends on material properties such as uh, the critical electric field the velocity saturation of course it also depends on the impedance levels 
the how you are matching the impedances and you also it also depends on what is the delta T max you can handle. So, it will depend on like the thermal conductivity of a material ok, how much of heat can be handled by material. If some oxides say gallium oxide has very low thermal conductivity, but some material like silicon carbide has very high thermal conductivity. So, the corner frequency could be very different for those two different material systems. Now, if I like took this take this plot and look at some con you know conventional kind of a material. So, this is your power, this is the frequency. So, frequency is suppose this is your 10 gigahertz, uh, suppose this is your 50 gigahertz, this is your 100 gigahertz and power you may be at 0 0.1 watt, 1 watt, 10 watt, maybe 100 watt and beyond 100 watt also you have ok. So, if you look at for instance uh, as I told you the there is a corner frequency. So, if I look at gallium arsenide it might look something like uh, like that this is gallium arsenide this is CW at lower frequencies of course, you have a thermal limit this is 1 by f and this is at higher frequencies you have 1 by f square limit ok. Uh, that is your gallium arsenide impact diode, this is gallium arsenide impact diode. So, you can see that at 10, 20, 30, 40 gigahertz you can get few watts or even tens of watts of power, people can even go to up to 100 watt probably, people have reported much more than that and then uh, at higher frequencies like millimeter wave you know you are talking about 70, 80, 90 gigahertz you are probably talking about a watt or less than a watt ok. Now, how does silicon compare to this? Silicon actually is also material property the critical electric field, the velocity of saturation, the thermal conductivity etcetera etcetera. Silicon actually goes something like this, uh, it is very interesting silicon goes something like that and then that, this is a 1 by f square and this is 1 by f and this is a silicon, silicon impact diode. So, what it means is that at low frequencies something like say below 50 gigahertz or so, it is better to go to gallium arsenide because gallium arsenide will give you higher power gallium arsenide will give you higher power. But if you are going to uh, like uh, because the thermal conductivity of silicon is actually better than the thermal conductivity of gallium arsenide ok. Uh, so, the corner frequency of silicon comes at a little farther away maybe close to 100 gigahertz. So, at those kind of frequencies such as 100 or gigahertz or above 100 gigahertz because of the fact that the corner frequency of silicon is much higher than that of gallium arsenide because of a higher or superior thermal conductivity of silicon as opposed to that of gallium arsenide. This kind of applications at 100 or more than 100 gigahertz you might be benefiting more from a silicon impact diode than a gallium arsenide impact diode ok. So, that is an important thing to consider and of course, you know when you have this diode an impact diode for instance this is an impact diode um, you have this current source that you are feeding in the voltage here and then you have an inductor maybe you have a capacitor and maybe you have a resistor. This could be your tuning network, this is how you actually put it ok, the tuning network where you are going to put the, the impact diode and the impact diode initial noise or some pulsing or ramping will sustain create and sustain the oscillation and that is how you do it ok. And I told you the resonant frequency of this is basically your V sat by 2 L, I already talked about that. Uh, the terminal AC voltage, the terminal AC voltage, this voltage across the impact diode can be generated from the DC bias circuit and hence it is called an oscillator because a DC is converted to an oscillating signal and this is for the last time I am telling you that any noise internally generated could be amplified through a feedback mechanism for instance to generate this signal and sustain the oscillation with the resonant cavity ok. So, this is about your impact diode and it is very important to understand that the impact diode has a lot of application especially in generating higher power RF signal. Uh, the military there is a lot of strategic and military importance of the impact diode and we will see in the next class of course, there is something called gun diode also. Gun diode and tunnel diode is something that we will talk about in lecture 13 and 14 in the next two lectures and you will see that in gun diode actually the powers are lower this is your gun diode. In, in silicon gun diode of maybe gallium arsenide um, actually do not quote me wrong gallium arsenide and silicon might have different performances, but then generally the gun diode powers are lower than impact diode. One inherent problem of impact diode is that the phase noise is very high. The phase noise is very high because avalanche creation and generation is a very statistical process, different electrons have uh, occurred this uh, the avalanche happens at different time. So, because of the statistical region reason you have a very high phase noise in impact diode and that is a significant limitation. Maybe when you talk about gun diode I will show you some images and pictures of real uh, impact diode, real gun diode, real tunnel diode and we will try to wrap up this two terminal microwave transit devices in the next two lectures ok. With that we will come to an end to this lecture, thank you for your time.